Okay. I have to record this. This is crazy. I can't believe I'm doing this. I I keep thinking but I have this intrusive thought going through my head and it's learn to dance in the rain. So that's what we're going to do. And in the thunder and lightning and mud. I'm getting there. Tent's almost set up. I chose a spot on the opposite side of that firing away from the toilet. <sighs> There's a path. You can go further into the woods. I don't know if the rule is I go further, but I'm not going to. This is <laughs> I'm staying right here. I don't want to go down into the bowels of the forest by myself. Because after it goes down and it's raining and I want to be on high ground. But anyways, I wanted to point out that there is a major or somewhat of a disadvantage with the Big Agnes. The Big Agnes is in two parts, the main tent and the rain fly. Um, the main part, the whole top, so the bottom is waterproof, but then it starts... It's got a mesh. See this mesh? That's the inside of the tent there. And guess what? It's raining and the inside of the tent is getting rained on and wet. See that shelf? That's wet. But I'm trying to hustle and get the rain fly over it. Uh, so the inside of the tent's already wet. Or damp anyway. I just gotta finish putting the rain fly on and I'll stake it out so it's nice and taut. So I'll be hopefully nice and dry tonight because it's going to, if I remember right, it's going to dip into the high 40s and rain well into late tomorrow morning. So wet and cold. Um, let's get on with it. There, all set up. I don't know if you can see my camera how beautiful it is. This is, this is gorgeous. But anyways, I forgot the first thing I do when I get to camp is I hang my bear bag or at least get the rope hung over a branch because <laughs> I've made the mistake a couple times before where I was trying to hang a bear bag in the dark. That's well, no fun. But all these trees, they're like really tall. And they don't have branches. It's way, way up there. What I need to do is I need to throw this over a branch. But I, I put my bug spray in there because I need something to weight it down and I couldn't find any rocks. I don't know. This, I don't know what people are doing. There is like nothing. There's this one branch right there. If it can support my bag of food, that'll be good enough. Oh, I did it. Took me about four tries and I cut it over that little branch. That's where I'm gonna hook the bag. I don't wanna hook it right now. And I'll tie the other end. I'll pull it up high and tie that other end of the string to a tree. And that's just meant to keep things from getting into your food. But my my bag is supposedly scent proof and waterproof. I'm not too worried about it. Alright. So oh it's wetter in here than I thought. That is water. That is wet. Oh, man. 
Oh, this sucks. Oh, crap. I guess oh, I'm going to try and mop it up. I'm trying to try and soak it up. I mean, it's getting dark. It's getting dark. I don't want to pack up and go back to the car. Ugh. Okay. Oh, so the rain's picking up again. I'm using my shirt. I just took off my shirt. This is the one I wore today. And, you know, I didn't plan on wearing it. I thought, you know, it's kind of damp. So I'm using this to try and dry the inside of the tent. So, oh, oh, my goodness. There we go. Just do the best I can. All right. Uh, maybe I'll give it one more swipe with something else. And call it a day. There's my pile of stuff in the corner. I had to leave the my backpack in the awning. It's so it's wet. The outside of it's wet, and I don't want to bring anything else wet in here. Yeah, that's where we're at. Ooh. Anyways. I hope once I get settled here, things will get a little bit easier. Okay, crisis averted. I have managed to mop up the inside of the tent and I think it's dry enough that um, I'm not going to die of hypothermia during the night. Um, it's, I don't know what the temperature is. It's getting a little bit chillier. It's still raining. Um, I haven't put out my sleep, my sleeping bag and sleeping, um, mat yet because I'm going to have to go back outside again, uh, to hang the bear bag and whatnot. And I'm going to, I, I don't know how to handle that. I'm going to come back in the tent wet and I will just make sure I have dry clothes on and everything's under control before I pull out the sleeping quilt and all that stuff. My main goal is to stay dry. Here, I'll show you what I have done so far. Okay, so what I did is I made this side of the tent the entry points. Um, I'm I hung my hat, my rain jacket, I had a garbage bag, I laid that down, and I put my shoes in here. Surprisingly enough, my shoes, or my feet, and the inside of my shoes have stayed dry. So these Solomons must have some type of waterproofing, um, which is pretty impressive. My, my sock, still totally dry after walking through all that mud and mud puddles and um, over here I will set up um, you know where I'm going to sleep and I'm going to kind of push all of it over here and that's how I plan to stay dry I shove my wet shirt up in the little cubby up there oh there's a little bench up here you see that's a wet bandana I used it finished mopping up the inside of the tent and there is everything all wrapped up in a waterproof bag of sorts keeping my clothes my food and my sleeping system dry so uh, now I guess I'm just going to relax for a little bit before I go out and don't judge me I earn this Okay, so I'm still relaxing in my tent. I've had a little bit of wine, um, so I've calmed down a little bit. You know, you know, that definitely helped a lot. It's really, really dark 
here. Um, but quiet and the sound of the rain is kind of soothing in its own way. I still haven't got out of the tent yet. I'm just waiting for a chance to kind of do everything at once. Like, uh, you know, go to the bathroom, hang the bear bag. Um, I don't know how to handle food in this situation. I mean, if it was daytime out or the morning, I guess I would um, try to put up the awning on the Big Agnes and just kind of cook under that in in my tent. But it's nighttime and it's raining and I gotta get through the night. Um, so, yeah. I'm not really hungry anyway. It's fine. Anyhow, um, so I've been relaxing a little bit, making sure everything is staying dry. There is a, a point that of concern on the top of the tent. It's like a fine mist that just kind of, I mean, if I didn't have my headlamp on, I wouldn't even see it, but I could see the mist. Anytime the rain hits the top of the tent really hard. And then on the tent floor here, there's like little droplets of water and I don't want that on my falling on me while I'm sleeping because that'll add up and by morning I'll be damp um, so what I did is uh, up there <laughs> that's my shirt that I was wearing earlier today <laughs> I used that to mop up the wet, wet floor of my tent uh, and I kind of like, this big Agnes tent has a lot of points with little, um, little loops sewn, sewn into it, um, which is genius because you can solve a lot of problems having these little loops. Um, <laughs> I kind of strung my t-shirt across there because I'm thinking, thinking that it'll like catch that little mist of water and keep me dry. Um, I'm about ready to get out my sleeping pad because the ground is chilly. It's getting cold. Um, I think I'll stay warmer if I at least get that blown up and have that between me and the ground. And after I get out of the tent, I'll take out my sleeping bag. All right. Um, it is time. <laughs> the rain has let up. Um, I have to go to the bathroom and just wrap things up for the night. So I have to leave the tent now. I've put my shoes back on, which are nice and dry on the inside, which I really appreciate. But this rain jacket, it's done all it can do. Um, full disclosure, I did strip naked and put this rain jacket on and it's wet because it's wet. And it is what it is at this point. So it's time to go outside and see what it's like um, once it's pitch dark. Should be interesting. There's my food bag and my cook pot. It's the rain's starting to pick up again. Uh, you know, I'm just going to not cook. I'm not going to cook. This isn't happening. <sighs> I'll be okay. I just got to hang this, this bear bag, which, can you see that with my shadow? Ah, um, okay, so, there's my bear bag. You can see it. Ah, tied to that tree. It's starting to rain. So, there's my tent. I'm going back in there. I'm not cooking supper. <laughs> I don't, I'm just not going to. This is done. I hung my food and I'm going into the tent for the night. I'm going to strip off these wet clothes and put dry clothes on, my sleep clothes on. And um, hopefully sleep till morning. Okay. I have 
finally changed into my dry sleeping clothes, um, set up my sleeping pad, pillows. This pillow is nice. It's cushy. It actually has my puffy jacket in it. So if I do get cold, I'll pull my puffy jacket out of this. And this is, I don't know what brand, Sea to Summit, I think. I, I like this pillow. It's soft, it's cushy, and if I don't blow it up real hard, um, it works really well. So I'm really picky about my pillows. And my shoes. I went out into the rain. I thought it had calmed down. Um, and then the minute I got out there, it just started raining again. So I managed to get the, um, bear bag hung, pee, <laughs> and I skipped supper. I'm like, I'm not that hungry. Let's just go inside and get warm and dry. Um, the rain jacket, I like kind of hang it on the wet side of the tent. Um, you know... It does block wind, and to a certain point, it does keep you dry. But right now, it's saturated. Like, I put it on, and it's wet on the inside. So if I do have to get up and pee in the middle of the night, I just, I don't know how else to handle it. I'm going to have to strip. I'm going to have to take my clothes off, put this wet rain jacket on, and go outside and pee. And it's better to do that than, you know, go outside, get damp with my sleep clothes. So I hope I don't have to pee. Um, let's see, I got some clothes, all the wet stuff's there. I like this little shelf. It's handy. Um, my sleeping quilt. I like this. See this? Let me see this toe box. It has a zipper that goes up to there. I'm going to zip that. And then you cinch this up. See? And that's where your feet go. And it keeps your feet warm. Um, and then it has straps. Where is my straps? Here they go. I just love this thing. This is... I love my sleep coat. This is one of the best things. See this strap? Um, it goes around you and under the sleeping pad. So it keeps you in the quilt and the quilt on top of you, basically. Um, and if I get really cold, um, the top, this is that where the head is. The head has buttons and you can button that around you on, around kind of like your neck. And you can cinch, cinch it shut to keep your head warm if you need it. So anyways, super warm, super light. Just love this thing to death. Another thing that is worth the money and the, and the investment if you had to choose what you're going to spend money on is merino wool. Leggings, um, shirts, wool socks. Um, if you're going to go out in weather that's less than ideal, um, you definitely, you want to invest in merino wool and wool socks because it just keeps you warmer and it dries faster and, um, it just makes you so much more comfortable. Yeah, and the rain is picking up again. Wonderful. My shoes are still dry. I went out in the rain, got wet, and the insides are still dry. That's just crazy. And I did look at these. They have, there it is, like Gore-Tex. So I guess that's a real thing. It actually keeps your feet dry, which is awesome. Oh, and here is my, just a David, so you don't worry. That's my knife. This is my mace. They're both on my necklace. Right here. Got that. All right. So far, so good. So it is about seven o'clock in the morning. Um, it's still raining, <laughs> but that's what I came out here to do is 
um, learn and experience camping or backpacking in the rain um, just so I'm doing it in a more controlled way so in the future um, I won't be caught by surprise surprise so I am learning a lot that's for sure um, the tent here has held up pretty well oh gosh I'm gonna fall over it's um, the netting on the inside it's a two-walled tent um, the netting itself like the ceiling I guess you would call it under the rainfly that is moist um, but the, the, the equipment and the gear and everything seem to be dry and the floor of the tent seems to be ex acceptable enough. There's no standing water. Um, yeah, really pretty. I'm just kind of enjoying this. It's beautiful. I'm standing here naked in my underwear with my wet rain jacket on. Luckily, there's nobody else around. Now I'm going to have to change my underwear. I should have brought extra. Um, I left my sleeping clothes in the tent under my warm sleeping bag. So even though I am getting a little chilled, I can strip when I get back in the tent. And if I want to, put those clothes back on. Um, but first, I'm going to go get that bear bag right there. I thought I would just show you quick. Um, that's my tent, way over, way over there. That's my tent. So this morning I got up, got suited up, and came out here and walk down this little path. And behind these fallen trees. is the toilet there it is I guess as rustic as it is it is nice to be able to sit and do your business in the morning and um, this was my view while doing that and here I have managed to construct an awning I don't know how well this is going to work I use the poles from the other my other tent. Um, otherwise, I think you're supposed to use trekking poles. And I don't really know how to do this. So I'm pretty hungry. I skipped supper last night, um, and I'm getting cold. So a nice hot breakfast will be perfect. And so I'm going to cook out here. And hopefully I won't burn the tent down. Um, so what I have first, first I'm going to make coffee. I brought one of these. Uh, I had purchased some disposable coffee cups with a lid, um, just because it's lightweight. And I found that I really need a lid on my coffee, no matter where I am or where I'm hiking. I need a lid. Um, so that was my solution to that. And I have multiple meals. I plan for two days. Um, I might not stay for two days, but I plan for two days. And what I did, because I did not have enough room in my pack to keep all my dehydrated meals in those bulky packages, I'm going to cook in my cook pot. Um, and once... I've added the hot water and cooked it. I'm going to put it in the cook pot in this. And this is just a little insulating um, envelope. So I save on fuel. I'll just let it sit and um, cook for 15-20 minutes while I'm enjoying my coffee. Uh, so I'm going to get that. And this looks like a lot of food, but this was going to be like four meals. <laughs> I dumped four um, breakfast scrambles in this in a rush. Um, I didn't have, I planned this trip last minute and didn't have time to go to the store or anything of that nature. So I dumped what I had into this bag. It's kind of a mix mash of 
different brands and recipes, but it's all freeze dried egg scramble type stuff. So um, I'm going to dump some of this into the cook pot, and that will be my that will be my breakfast. This work. Boop. Put that right on there. And then it's hard to film while trying to do this. what's going on. Here we go. Whew. I just didn't have it screwed on correctly. <laughs> oh, that would have been bad. No coffee and no hot breakfast would make for a very grumpy girl. That's what I need right there. That's good. Whew. Perfect. So let's just dump that in there. Oh, I want more. I'm hungry. Let's get some more in there. Where's my water? Oh, there's my water, right? Oh. Tuck that back in there. My sit pad is soaked. <laughs> so, sit pad isn't doing me a lot of good right now. Um. I mean, I guess I read that you, if you don't have a fire source, if something goes wrong with your stove you can cold soak this stuff I mean it's not a lost cause you just I suppose cold soak it just it takes longer to you know get it wet <laughs> so yeah I'll just put this on the burner heat it up and then put it in that this little insulating envelope and we'll, we'll see how, how that turns out might be my new favorite way of doing things. So here it is. Um, I had left it on the burner and slipped the, the envelope over the top of it. I thought I had been recording a video, but I wasn't. <laughs> so I didn't get to record that part. I made a mess because I overfilled the pot. It boiled over and just made a mess. So. I have this rainwater see up there. That's going to help me wash all this up when I'm done. So, time to eat. Um, I tasted it. it. Tastes pretty good. Today it's a high of 57. High of 57 degrees and it is going to rain until 5 o'clock. And I'm still on the fence on whether or not I'm going to hike further down the trail and camp one more night or if I'm going to go the opposite direction and go back to my car and drive three hours home. I'm not sure. Either way, I'll probably take a nap. I didn't get a lot of sleep and I'm, I'm pretty tired. And my sleeping bag is nice and warm and comfortable. Over here. It's a nice warm place I don't want to get out of. <laughs> um, it did get into the 40s last night. But this, um, this sweet, the sleeping quilt kept me really warm. I was actually overheating. So 
I'm definitely fine to sleep um, into the 40s. I don't know if it dipped into the 30s. It probably would be okay. Maybe just add some some other, maybe a couple more layers of clothing um, and a hat. And this is my coffee. Drink that all up. And finally, let's eat. Okay, I've finished eating. I'm really full. <laughs> really, really full. I had to force myself to eat the last bit of it. Um, it's wet out there. And I'm not inclined to get out unless I absolutely have to. Um, because... I'm not ready to pack up quite yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm digging a hole right outside the door of the tent. See, it's I'm digging a hole. Oh, this is what you're supposed to do, I think. And I'm going to dump the food waste into the hole and bury it. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so I don't attract animals and whatnot. And then I'll get this stuff washed up and see what I f see what I feel like doing next. So I've thought about the next step, and um, I hope I don't regret this. But I'm going to keep going. I'm going to do my best to pack up the tent. And try to keep the inside dry, which will be a real challenge. I'm not sure how I'm going to accomplish that. I guess the last um, resort thing I do is like last night, I find something to um, mop up the inside of the tent. So I'm going to carefully take it down and try <laughs> to kind of leave the rain fly um, over the top of it. And I'm and right now it's drizzling just a little bit. The rain hasn't stopped, but it's not as um, hard. You know, it isn't coming down as hard. So um, let's give it another day. It looks like the rain will stop by the time I set up in the new camp. Uh, I should be able to make a fire tonight and warm up a little bit. Um, it, hopefully things will, you know, dry off a little bit through the night and into the morning. And all I gotta do is make it through the night and get back to my car in the morning. Even if that means hiking back in my pajamas. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as I'm warm and dry. By the time I get to the next camp, I'm gonna be soaking wet. Um, but I do have warm clothes to change into. So let's give it a try. Almost done packing up. Somebody listened to my prayers and the rain lit up for a little bit here, which is wonderful. After hours and hours seemingly of nonstop rain, it just couldn't have been better timed. My food bag is not inside my backpack anymore because it's soaking wet and the goal of what's inside my pack, the goal is to keep that dry. And just putting that wet sack in there will make everything feel damp. Plus this garbage bag full of wet clothes. Um, somehow, somehow I'm going to stack all this on top on the outside of the pack. All right, we're all, oh, I'm all loaded up, ready to go. This is a ridiculous amount of stuff. <laughs> this is by far the heaviest pack I have ever had to carry. Um, now that everything's wet, water is heavy. So that's adding to this oh, mass of stuff. I'm going to somehow put on my back and hike four to five more miles. 
just look at that gorgeous path. Pretty soon the fall colors will be out. This is one of my favorite segments, trail segments by far. So gorgeous. So I've been gaining elevation, kind of going up and up and up. It just feels like this is getting close to a good resting spot. I like it when I get up higher in the forest. There's more light, less bugs. Breathing a little heavy. <laughs> this pack is heavy. All right. Yeah, see, we're up. There it is. Right there. That's where I'm going to have lunch. So I've made it to the um, the next campsite. I think I'm just going to stop here. I could go further. Um, two, three more miles. There's another nice dispersed camping area that I like there. Um, but this one's okay. You can see behind me. It's a hemlock grove. Should be plenty of good spots for a tent. I'm the only one out here. I haven't seen or heard another human being since I said goodbye to David um, on Friday. So, <laughs> the minute I got in the car, that was it. Um, except for listening to music on the radio in the car. That doesn't count. So in solitude so I'm guessing by tomorrow I'll be ready to go back to civilization but I'm glad I decided to stay out one more night because this will probably be the only or I should say the last um, real trip out this year before it gets colder out I did go collect water I have to filter it but I have a couple liters collected I want to try to show water down there, see? Yeah, there's a river down there. I found a way down. There's one spot that I could do it without breaking my my bones and falling in the river. But um, I'm going to stop here. Something about the, the cold and the wet just kind of saps the energy out of a person. I can understand why people avoid um, backpacking in the rain. It just takes a lot of energy to do that. But so far, it hasn't been a bad thing. I am glad I did it. It's just um, I ran out of steam. So this is what we're all stop for the night. The tent is pretty wet. The mesh is dripping, <laughs> dripping wet. And the floor needs to be mopped up. So I gotta find something in my pack I can use to just go in and try to dry the floor of my tent. Yep. This is a totally different experience than last night. Instead of being cooped up in my tent, I get to sit here and look down at the river, um, cooking a snack, well, here is supper. Enjoying a little mac and cheese. Watching Hiker TV. One version of it, anyway. Um, again, I just poured some dehydrated mac and cheese in here. Added some water. And let it, let it cook. I did put some beef jer jerky. So, beef jerky chunks in there. And that, that added a lot. That was... I'm not a huge mac and cheese fan. It's just this is what I had. And I think the beef jerky is making the meal much better. But 
after I'm done with this. I have to figure out how to clean this. I don't know how I'm going to clean this. I might have to figure out how to get back down there and get some extra water. Get that nice and cleaned up. I gotta pick up this mess. Oh, I got this mess over here in the tent. It's set up way back there. So, I'm really tired, so I'm going to, unless I catch a second wind, I will probably start setting up my the inside of the tent and cleaning up and it's going to be dark pretty soon, so maybe when it gets dark, I'll just, that's when I'll go to bed. Well, good morning. It is oh, almost 7 o'clock. It's about 50 degrees right now. Um, nice, calm morning. Right now, I'm just walking to get my food bag i'll start with that i think i will cook out of my tent again just because it's a little chilly and i'm not fully awake yet make some coffee um here's my here's my food bag there are at least two maybe three Really noisy squirrels or chipmunks. I mean, they carry on the whole time. I don't know if you can hear them. They were like this yesterday, too. But I went back to sleep. I laid down and I slept for a couple more hours. I just was really tired. I don't know if it's the cold weather or, or what's getting me, but now it's almost 9.30. Um, I do feel better having slept in. Finally getting to making my coffee and um, everything that I have to do. Every, it just seems like there's an overwhelming amount of stuff that I have to do before I'm actually on the trail and heading back to my car. But that's the one thing about backpacking is nothing is fast everything takes time you want water you have to go get it out of the lake or the the river you have to filter it um you know going to the bathroom's a process everything's a process so um i guess where i'm going with this is it really makes you appreciate things like when you get home if you have to go to the bathroom you can just go sit who sit on a toilet and it flushes and you can do that in the middle of the night inside you know, that's a real luxury um you turn on the faucet and clean water comes out of it just like that um it's just it's just a way of really making you grateful for what you have um you have to be a little uncomfortable sometimes to be grateful in the long run for for um things that you take for granted another thing that backpacking has made me appreciate anyway is people i haven't seen another person since i left on friday today is sunday morning which doesn't seem like a long time but once you think about it how often do you go without seeing anybody else not even strangers not people passing on the street or the trail or um like nobody and it's it's um not something you realize until you do it i'm comfortable with it for a day uh, but after a day i start thinking about it starts wearing on me. I start actually thinking about it, and I start missing everybody. And, uh, and it's a good way to recharge. And then when you're ready to go back, um, just have a different perspective on things. Breakfast scoop scramble. Once again, this time I won't overfill the pot.
this way of managing your food versus just, you know, cooking it in the um, bag that you buy them in. Because you don't produce very much food waste, which is nice. But it's also a much bigger hassle because you have to clean this darn cook pot. And cleaning the cook pot means finding water and filtering more water. There. Some breakfast scramble. I'm not going to worry about cleaning anything, though, because after I'm packed up here, I'm heading back to the car, back to the luxuries of life. So there'll be one less thing I have to do today. And you, the rule is, and I'm breaking that rule, this trip, is you're never eat in your tent. You just don't do it. You should eat over, over there. But I don't care. It was raining yesterday. I didn't have any other options. And I'm cold and I'm packing out today anyway. So if I can, I try to eat away from my tent. I try to cook away from my tent. Don't follow my example here. <laughs> Don't do this. It's not the best idea. Slowly getting moving today. <laughs> I figure I have all day. There's no rush and I I really like that. A little more coffee left. Definitely not going to waste this. Um, I'll put some pants on. <laughs> I can just, I don't even have to dress really inside the tent. The trail is at the end of that ridge. You know, somebody could come walking by, but I just dress behind the tent. You couldn't see me. And I, my two water bottles are empty. Those two liters that I filtered yesterday. I will need a little bit of water. Um, well, I don't need, but I should have a little bit to get back to the car. So I'm going to go down and filter some water out of that river down there. And this time I'll take you with... I just got to put my shoes on, finish my coffee. I left my shoes outside. They're dry. But I forgot to put my bug net over them, and that always bothers me. It's like an OCD thing. I think, what's in my shoe? I already picked a slug out of one of them. But I don't see anything in there. I think it's okay. No spiders. Snakes. <laughs> okay, I'll get these on, finish my coffee, and we'll go down to the river. There's a blaze. Yellow blaze means you are on the Ice Age Trail. So when you see this, you know you're on the official official trail. Oh, and I'll show you this too. I am at South Fork Yellow River. And my tent is way back there. Okay. Anyhow, back to water. I'll try not to drop my phone in the river. So there's a little bridge, the path continues down there, but I'm going to go down into this little ditch. <laughs> it's not as bad as it looks. Just gotta be careful, it's really muddy. So far my feet have stayed dry, which, which is pretty amazing, but I don't want to push it. Right here, somebody built a little thing. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Anyways, here it is. Oh, see, this is right here. Very pretty. All right, so I got my scooper. And the reason you need a scooper is because if we were just to take this little thing and you try to like dunk it in the water, it's like, it's harder than it looks. The water doesn't go in there very easily. It takes a long time. I don't want to walk out there into the deep, keep my feet dry. So that's why I have this. 
they eat a whole bunch at once and just pour that into the collection bag. Maybe a little bit more. That's probably enough. There we go. Now, I need to crawl back up there and head back. Now that I've scooped water with this, um, best practice would be before I use it again to actually drink out of or eat out of, I would, um, probably boil water in it just to sanitize my container. That hasn't been an issue so far. I don't want to bring more things than I have to. So if things can have a dual purpose, <laughs> that's even better. That's my water filter. This is lightweight, portable, easy to use. Um... I get a bit impatient with it though because it does take longer. I'd rather have like one that you hang from somewhere and it kind of filters by gravity um, and try that. I know it would be, maybe it's heavier and has its disadvantages, but just sitting here having to filter water um, some days when I'm tired and hungry is a little rough, you know, because I have to. To sit here and hold it. This is going to go into that bottle. You'll see what I mean here. And that's what it does. <laughs> I have to sit here with this. All the filters. You know, takes a while. All right, I am all packed up, ready to get back on the trail. The pack job is much better this time now that everything isn't sopping wet and I'm not having to pack up in the rain. If you can see this, but I want to show you that mushroom. I've never seen anything like that. They're huge. I wonder what they are. Blaze. I have turned off and I am taking a cut across trail to the car. So the blue blaze means I'm on a spur trail or is that what you call it? <laughs> a different trail. I've left the Ice Age trail now and I'm making my way to where I parked my car and there's always that thought like my car can be okay. It's been sitting there for a couple days unattended. I hid all my valuable. Oh, I let no, actually, I didn't leave any valuables in my car, but you gotta leave some stuff in your car. Just we'll just see if everything's good to go in just a minute. Oh, it looks like everything is just as I left it. There it is, my lonely car, patiently waiting for me in this little spot. This road 
This is called Sailor. Sailor Road. That way. It goes that way. Just this little dirt road out here. And there's a little sign uh, that, you know, welcomes us to the lake. All right, that about wraps it up. Um, this was my first time making my own video footage. Um, I wanted to document it at least once really well. I was doing a few things new and hopefully my husband will help me put it into some sort of logical continuous video. Um, just, I just think it's important that I have something to remember um, a trip like this by. I know there's the question there is probably questions and the biggest question is what am I doing out here alone <laughs> well the simple answer is nobody was able to or was willing to come out with me um, but that doesn't stop me I am originally from the north woods I've spent a significant amount of time in the woods um, with family, friends, alone. Um, in many ways, I'm much more comfortable out there, out there, than I am, say, walking down a busy st street in a large city. I guess you know that saying, um, you can take the girl out of the North Woods, but you can't take the North Woods out of the girl. So thanks for watching.